Welcome to Believer's Channel 2. I'm Pastor Russ. Today I'm going to be talking about Christians being mocked. Now Jesus was mocked and he told us, what I go through, you will go through. And he was mocked by everybody. He was mocked by the religious community, everything. And a lot of times Satan uses that to pull us away from what we want to do, from what we want to be like. Once we accept Jesus, um, so many of us want to get as close to him as we can. And Satan don't like that. He'll draw us away. So I want to remind you that there's a thumbs up button. And we, it helps us a lot when you hit that. And subscribers, we really need you. Because the more subscribers we have, the more doors open up for people to hear the word of God. And as a Christian, you should want that. So it don't cost anything to be a subscriber. You just hit that little red button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and you become one of the ministry. You, every time somebody comes to Jesus through the ministry, you'll get credit for it in heaven. So you got nothing to lose by hitting that subscribe button. The fact is you got everything to gain and you'll be supporting us and I, I really appreciate it. We've had several subscribers uh, come on board within the last two weeks. And we can use all we can get, so please join the group. Now let's get to the day's message. Christians being mocked. Matthew 9.24. In the NIV version, he says, Go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. The Son of God. Telling people... And, and, and the girl's father's in the room. He says, she's just asleep. He said, I'll wake her up. And they laughed at him. That's what happens even today. When somebody who's been a sinner and they want to get close to God, people laugh at them. And they, that, Satan uses that to try to pull, them, pull you away and follow him. You know, they won't laugh at you here. Well, yeah, and they won't because he's got them all. <clears throat> but they laughed at him and he was going to, he raised that girl from the dead. I don't think they were laughing so loud when they, she walked out the door of the house. They probably quit laughing and just walked away. Now, Matthew 20, 19, it says, and will hand him over to the Gentiles. Acts 17.32, NIV version. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. So, because of what was going on, they wanted to hear more. So I'm going to tell you some things I know you don't know. It has to do with the crucifixion and what happened afterwards. The Bible doesn't really stress everything that happened afterwards, but there are histories uh, where they wrote, wrote down and kept records of every little thing that happened after Jesus died on the cross. And I remember when I was a kid, I listened to a, a commentary by Paul Harvey. And Paul Harvey always said, now for the rest of the story. So I'm telling you today, now is the rest of the story. When Jesus died on that cross, everybody who mocked him suddenly got very scared. And I mean very scared. The soldiers got scared. Everybody got scared. Because the man of the God, Jesus, the Son of God, was just killed by his people. Not only by the Jews, but the Gentiles. They, they delivered him to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles were just as responsible as the Jews. So when he died, there was an earthquake. The earth shook. Graves opened, and the saints, people who were dedicated to God, got up out of their graves and walked around town. Now that did not shake up a few people. The sun got totally 
black. I mean, the sun itself, when you looked at it, it was bright, and it, it, you could see that the light was there, but it was withdrawn from the earth. The sun rays couldn't come to the earth because nothing could look, there was no light that could be on the earth during so much evil, so much darkness. The darkness could not be lit up with the sun. And the moon, the same way. The moon's rays was withdrawn and could not light the earth because, again, there was so much, uh, so much ugliness. The darkness of Satan was on this planet and no light would touch the planet. It would be withdrawn. Every animal, every plant, every human being knew what happened. They knew that the Son of God, the Holy One, the Messiah, was killed. The Christian, you know, it was so dark. It was beyond black. And they had lamps lit and everything, but you know, when it, in outer space, when it's really dark, uh, if you shine a light, it doesn't go forward. It stays right where it's at. And that's what happened on that darkness of the planet. It was pitch black, and there was no light. <clears throat> so you had no light, no moonlight. People uh, raised up out of their graves, uh, walking around, and you had earthquake. Uh, that broke rocks open and it says that even the rocks wept for the Lord and praised God. The rocks did what men's hearts didn't. The temple, the curtain split. That was a curtain between the holy of holies and, and man. So the barrier between man and God was taken away. And that curtain happens to be about four inches thick. So you just don't tear it like a piece of cloth. Uh, it had to be supernatural. A lot of people don't know some of them big doors where it takes 10 men to open it or more. Uh, those doors that were open, they, they came open and all by themselves. And you had to be able to shut them. Well, every time men got together and shut the doors, they would open back up. God was going to keep open the avenue between the Gentile and God and between the Jew and God. No longer was a sacrifice needed. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the last sacrifice. And he was letting everybody know centurion out there at the cross he could look straight down all them doors that opened and right into the holy of holies after that earthquake he said surely this was the man of god this man had done nothing wrong now you got to remember this centurion this roman soldier he was an officer and he was in charge of many uh, many crucifixions and he said this crucifixion was like none other and he realized that Jesus was God so no one gets away with anything when you mock a Christian and when you mocked God now the Pharisees they had this nice cushy place they had meetings every day it was kind of like going to a five-star hotel and using the banquet room where they had meetings. It was that kind of thing. And the one they, they, they really put the pride in that, that was so great, it was destroyed. And it was destroyed, destroyed to the point they had to find another place to have meetings. And where they went to have meetings was nowhere close to the beauty and glamour of this of what they had. So yeah, God took everything away from them. They didn't get away with anything. And when somebody mocks you, they're not going to get away with it. They're mocking you because you're no longer like them. And they don't like that. 
you know, sin loves company. And in the church, when, when you get mocked by Christians, uh, because you're trying to get close to the Lord, you're just showing them one better than what they are. And they don't like it. They're all about religion. They're not about a relationship with God. And that's what you have to do. You have to have a relationship with the Almighty God, with your Lord God. You gotta say, my Lord, my Lord, I wanna be as close to you as I can get. I wanna know you. I wanna know you every day from morning to night. I want you to be a part of my life. Now there's a lot of people who go to church, don't even get close to that, but they'll be the first ones to mock you. The first ones to say, well, he used to do this, or she used to do that. They did it with Jesus, with Mary Magdalene. You know, he was having dinner with Mary and tax collectors and everything else. Prostitutes, the works. And he got mocked for it. And he said, these are, these are the ones that are sick. I came, I came here to heal the ones that are sick. And he wasn't talking about them physically. He was talking about them spiritually. But he got mocked by the religious, religious community. And who was with Jesus from beginning to end? Mary Magdalene. She was extremely faithful. In fact is she became the first apostle. Jesus, or the message she got at the tomb uh, was to be taken to the disciples. So she had the first message. So God respects women in the church to be teachers and, and to give messages. So all this religious stuff about women can't do this and women can't do that and uh, their past and stuff like that. They gave that up to Jesus. And the church is caught in something that's religious. So when you find a church to go to, make sure they don't have any religious hang-ups. And if they do, and somebody picks on you, say, hey, I have a relationship with God. Do you? And he forgave me for all my sins. Now for those of you have, that haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you just want to clean your slate and get closer to God, repeat after me this little prayer and you'll be adopted into the Messianic community. Just say, Father God, I know Jesus died for me. And I, I know I've sinned against you. I've even sinned against myself. Father, I ask that the blood of Jesus wash me clean. And that Jesus walk through this life with me. And that the Holy Spirit be a part of me and, and keep me on the, the narrow path to heaven. I just ask these things in Yeshua, Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, all your sins are behind you. They'll never be brought up again. And someday when you stand before the judge, Satan's going to be there with a whole list of things you've done. And your advocate, Jesus, is going to be there saying, covered by the blood. And that's what you want, covered by the blood. Be all that you can be, all that you can be for Jesus. The church must stand united as one with the Lord. We must stand for the principles of Jesus, the principle of our Father in heaven. And we must do it together. So unite as one. Have that relationship. And I just ask all of this in Yeshua Jesus' name. Now I want to bless you. May God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his countenance be with you. 
every day. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. God bless now.